My name is Laura Itahosa. I was born in the United States, and in 2002, I married the love of my life, Feb Itahosa. The president of Benson Itahosa University, a bishop in Church of God Mission International, and the only son to the late Archbishop Benson Itahosa, whom she met when she was 13 years old and got married to in her late 20s. Uh, I live in Benin City, Nigeria, happily live in Benin City, Nigeria. Nigeria has become my home. Uh, it's the best place in the world to live. I've enjoyed living here for the last 11 years. A pastor in Church of God Mission, she also works at the prestigious Benson Idahose University. And over the years, she has traveled to over 40 countries, working and serving as a missionary, a paramedic, amongst other things. But there are two things she enjoys the most. Doing exactly what God's called us to do. I enjoy hearing his voice and obeying it and walking in his perfect plan and also children. I actually used to tell people when I was growing up that I wanted to have 10 children. I was just one of those people who loved children. Before I got married, I had foster children that I was taking care of, I was raising them. Uh, I just, I love children. After her marriage to the love of her life, she expected everything to move just the way she planned. And I thought that everything was gonna be perfect. I thought that I was gonna get married and then the next year have a baby and the next year have my next baby and it didn't happen and I was a little bit taken aback. Although it was only a couple of months after their marriage, Lori was a little skeptical about not being pregnant. So she suggested to her husband that they go see a fertility specialist and after a series of tests, the result was devastating. The both of us had a 99.9% .9 chance of not being able to conceive a baby. They said for us to conceive a baby naturally would just be one-tenth of one percent. Um, <clears throat> it was heartbreaking for us because it was something that I desired so much. And so the doctors told us that the only way that we could have a child together is if we did in vitro fertilization. In vitro, which means outside the body. It's a fertilization process by which eggs are removed from the ovaries and mixed with sperm in a laboratory culture dish and later inserted into the womb. It is painful, long and an expensive procedure. So after spending thousands of dollars on the first treatment. We were sure that that one was going to work. Uh, then we were just going to have our baby and nobody would know that we went through this infertility struggle. Uh, we went through the first treatment and it failed. And we're like, okay, God, what are you going to do here? So he said, okay, let's try another one. The second trial had the same outcome. It failed. But not given up so easily, Reverend Lori and her husband began to do some research. There are about 25% uh, success rate with IVF. And so we started looking at the figures and we're like, okay, well, one in four has to work. If it's 25% success rate, at least if we've tried it four times, we should have a baby. So. We went to try the third time, and we were sure the third time was going to work. And that time we spent all our money, spent all our time, went through all the pain, and it still failed. Three out of four trials, they decided to make sure that this last opportunity would be the one. So they met with the best of the best doctors in the United States, and this time it was a success. I remember being pregnant with him and how exhilarating it was. I mean, just to know that finally I had a life inside my womb. Finally, this dream that I had of becoming a mother was a reality. In order not to take any chances with the baby, she decided to spend the entire pregnancy period in the United States of America. Reasons being that. I was afraid of everything in Nigeria. I was afraid of malaria. I was afraid of everything. I didn't want anything to touch this precious baby that I had in my womb. 36 weeks passed but an ultrasound scan showed that she had reduced amniotic fluid in her womb and labor would have to be induced. So they did, and after a very long induction process, they finally said, okay, let's do a C-section, because I wasn't progressing. Then they did the C-section, and I got to see my baby for the first time. Uh, he cried, he was so beautiful, uh, and we named him Ben after Ben City the host son. He was gorgeous, he was so precious, he was everything I dreamed of. Um, I just, I, I fell in love all over again. I never experienced how exciting it is to see your dream finally come true. Just to make sure all was well with the baby, he was kept in the neonatal unit for observation. And a few hours later, the doctors returned, bearing green news. The doctor came into the room and he said, uh, my husband thankfully was with me. 
and the doctor told me, he said, you, you need to come down to the neonatal unit. We're having some trouble with your baby. And I said, trouble with my baby? And they said, yeah, he's, he's having a hard time breathing. Reverend Lori was still weak from the birth, so she was wheeled to the neonatal unit and was shocked by what she saw. I saw the doctors doing CPR on my miracle baby, on the baby that I had believed God for for five years. Um, I had gone through so much over those five years, trusting God for a baby, telling people that God's going to give me my miracle. I finally had my miracle. I finally saw my baby. And then I saw my baby having chest compressions. And I saw them breathing for my baby. And I just, my, I was just taken aback. I couldn't believe it, that this is my child, that this is happening to. The doctors tried everything they could, but the situation only grew worse. So a helicopter was ordered to fly the child to another hospital. But by the time it arrived, it was already too late. The baby was dead. I remember when they handed me my dead child, my husband and I were sitting in the, the room where they take grieving parents. I remember sitting there and holding my baby. And I remember this, this voice kind of speaking to my husband and I that, wow, that this thing can happen in America where they have the best of care. My son had three neonatologists working on him. My son had the best of nursing care, the best of doctor's care. The, the neonatal unit that he was in was top notch. And we're sitting there going, he's dead. And if this can happen to us in America, where they have everything, what happens in Nigeria where we don't have the same resources, we don't have the same equipment, we don't have the same number of doctors with the same training that can resuscitate a, a situation like ours. And we began to get a passion in our heart to do something to improve the care for women and children in Nigeria. A passion rose up on the inside of us that we have to do something. After the burial of their son, they moved back to Nigeria and made a commitment with their lives to build a memorial for baby Ben, something that would make his legacy live on because... I believe that Ben had a purpose in this earth. I believe there was a reason why he was born into our family. And I believe that, that God can turn any situation around for his good. And so we started working towards opening up something for women and children here in Nigeria. That something later became a hospital, which they called Big Ben's Children Hospital. The building of Big Ben's Children Hospital is one that can only be described as a miracle. The first donation they got for the building was over a million dollars and it came from the same hospital where Ben was born and where he died. Uh, we had people come in and do all kinds of things to make the place into what it needed to be. And today we're at the first phase of Big Ben's Children's Hospital. Today we have a first class neonatal unit. We have beautiful labor and delivery rooms. We have the ability to take care of emergency situations for women in labor, emergency situations for women with gynecological problems, emergency situations for children, for babies. Uh, we've seen miracle after miracle after miracle in Big Ben's Children's Hospital because of the life of our first son. But that's not where the story ends, for on the 9th of July, 2007, during the funeral ceremony of their baby, there came a prophecy. The man who prophesied in our funeral, or preached in our funeral, he prophesied over my husband and I. And he said that a year from today, God's going to give your family a cause to rejoice. At the time, I couldn't believe it. At the time, I, I wanted to receive it, but I just didn't know how it would be possible. I was still healing from a C-section. I was told I couldn't have kids before. I'd been through four failed IVFs, one, one successful one, and that baby died. How am I going to rejoice a year from today? But like the prophet had said, exactly one year later, the 9th of July, 2008. My water broke and I went into the hospital with so much excitement on the inside of me that this time my baby is going to live. And I went in and they delivered a perfectly healthy baby boy, Faith Emmanuel Bensameda Hosa, who's five years old today, doing wonderful. He's the prefect in his class. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a precious boy, we're so proud of him. Faith Emmanuel Idahosa was just the beginning of God's blessings in their lives. Because in 2011, 
he decided to bless us with another natural pregnancy. And we also have Nathaniel Victor Bensonita Hosta, who's now 23 months old this month. Uh, and he's doing fantastic, precious baby boy. And then in 2013, we had yet another miracle baby. And that's baby Judah Bensonita Hosta. So God has just blessed us with three natural pregnancies, three gorgeous boys, and he was able to turn the story of our sadness. He was able to turn the story of our grief. He was able to turn the story of our pain into something that gives him glory. And that's Big Ben's Children's Hospital. Our goal is to take UBCH all around Nigeria to provide excellent care for women and children so that our, our people in our country in Nigeria don't feel like they have to go outside of the country to have good medical care. They don't feel like they have to leave the country to have a baby. Everything that they need to take care of them and to take care of the baby is right there in Nigeria. So we thank God for the vision of BBCH and we believe that this vision is going to reach all across Nigeria and make a difference in how we take care of women and children in this country.